Hello, this is Eric Vasquez from the ECOS. And today, we're going to start with our first interview for eConnect. Remember, every Friday is Interview Friday. We start with eConnect. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Eric Vasquez from the ECOS, and today we're starting with our first interview of eConnect. What is eConnect? eConnect is the link for you to get to know other environmentalists in different parts of the world. Uh, we're going to be talking about what they're doing, what challenges they are facing, what projects they are working on, and we're going to be providing you with our contact information so you are able to contact them if you have found uh, any projects that are uh, that you are having probably in common or if you want to get uh, any kind of advice from them, right? Now, today we're having Alize Boskar, who is the uh, founder of Zero Waste Shanghai and creative of Pace. She is based in Shanghai, China, and let's go and meet her. Hello, Alize, and thank you for accepting this uh, interview with eConnect. Hey Eric, thank you so much for having me on this interview. I'm really stoked to um, to be uh, participating in here for with the eCause. Now we're very pleased to have you, and we appreciate your time. Now to begin with this interview, I would like to know first of all what made you act. What was the factor? So I was always raised very like in a very sustainable environment, but I wasn't aware of it until I came to. Shanghai for the first time in 2014. I was, um, then one year later, I was in my last year at university and I was, there was a, the last course we had was called sustainable luxury. And that was basically what triggered me into becoming, uh, um, an advocate for an environmental sustainability. But then it grew to like, uh, a broader concept, which is the circular economy. Um, the fact that I made me act was just honestly that that one, a week of courses on sustainable luxury where um, I was, I, there were so many problems. And at the same time, I thought there must be solutions because that's how I think. I'm very solutions oriented. And yeah, that's basically how, what triggered me. And from then on, other things just kept triggering me, but that was like the biggest, like, aha, that like there was a before and after at that point. Wow. Uh, very interesting how, how everything moves there, right? Um, well, you, you, you mentioned you are working in China. So where are you from? I'm from Belgium. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm raised, born and raised in Belgium. Um, yeah, I'm the eldest of three. I uh, had a very green and amazing like uh, childhood. Again, I spent my summers uh, outside living in tents. My dad is an amazing cook and he bought organic food before everyone else did. Uh, so yeah, I, I grew up there and then I spent a bit of time in China, then one, um, uh, one year in the UK and then I came back to China. So it's been six years almost. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Now, could you tell us a little bit about what's the name of the organization that you were working with? How does it operate? What, 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 what are you guys actually doing in Shanghai? I am the founder of a company called Zero Waste Shanghai. Uh, in Chinese, we're called Bao Yu, and it operates in China. So we uh, bring we bring solutions to, to individuals, professionals, and uh, corporations about on sustainability because I feel like sustainability is like so overrated and I mean so overcomplicated and uh, overly used, and people just do not understand what's happening, what it is, and for me, it's just so simple. Like I see this, I see it very simply. We do conferences, we do a lot of education, awareness. Uh, we're now, we now just launched a course called PACE, which is an online platform and course for any professional who wants to start uh, a sustainability strategy within their company or who wants to learn more about it. Yeah, and why not? Shanghai is one of the cities that is working a lot in terms of uh, climate change and sustainability. Actually, I am very curious on how you started all this in, in a country 
that uh, is law regulated, everything that is, every organization that is working there in China is regulated by the, by the uh, government, it's an authoritarian uh, system, and you know, there are rules and policies that you have to follow. How, how do you cope with all, uh, all this? So how did I start everything? Well, it was very organic, to be honest. I was the first one. So um, I was the first one to organize uh, simple workshops uh, with like really hands-on activities. Other companies uh, do a great job of educating and raising awareness, which is super important. Definitely the first step. But I was missing the... Um, the next hands on, like what is the next action I can do? So then I started just doing things myself, looking things up. And, and then at some point, yeah, people just asked me, basically just asked me, how do you do a compost bin? How do you do this? How do you do that? And first it was at home and then it became in corporations. I just started making workshops, um, organizing them. People would pay for them, people would come. Um, I'm sure I'm being supervised uh, every day. But again, like I never, like I believe in China as a country. If there's one country in the world who will get to sustainability or sustainable like model or what way of living, it will be China. So um, for me, like all my activities that I do, I've, I've never been in concert consciously with the government. I'm sure I have unconsciously, but everything that I do, like I praise China's efforts. I praise uh, community. I praise basically a couple of the values of the Chinese culture. So hey, like the only thing where I felt some resistance is when I wanted to find a solution for uh, food waste on a larger scale. And then it becomes pretty clear that as a foreigner, there's not much you can do. It's pretty much in the, hand of the hands of the Chinese, which is fair uh, because waste as a Chinese understand it has a lot of value. So yeah, so that's the only way where I felt hindered uh, as a foreigner. I see. And have you ever brought uh, this project to any other countries or have you thought of uh, expanding? I haven't brought projects to other countries yet, but this year I went to Thailand and I went to Dubai to see what's happening there in terms of sustainability. It was super interesting for me to go there and to understand how it works differently in a not very similar way as China. China is much more organized when it comes to sustainable initiatives. And uh, because in China, like the, 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 the law is behind it. In other countries, it's, it's a democracy. So it's, it's slower. It's definitely so, it's a slower process. To give you an example uh, of that, and it kind of bounces back with the other question is, in the 20, July 2019, China introduced Overnight, I mean, it prepared. Uh, it prepared the, the the country, but overnight, they said you were going to start recycling. No, not recycling. Sorting your waste. Like every inhabitant in China had to sort their waste in four different categories. So it's in only four months they were able to achieve this on a scale of a country that, of a of a city that is 28 million people. It's pretty insane, and that's and that's just because 28 million people changed one tiny habit in their day, every day. So that's just a proof of why I believe China as a power. It's, I mean, no country is perfect. I'm not saying this, but when it comes to my cause and sustainability, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's going to drive them forward for sure. I have not brought other projects uh, to other countries yet, but uh, I am looking into Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Dubai right now. Yeah, it is very interesting what you're mentioning. It is slower in a democracy because people have to get organized. They, they have to vote on something and there are so many interests coming from one side and the other. And when it comes to an authoritarian government, uh, everything that a party, in this case in China, uh, says it has to be done and people have to follow. Otherwise, there are consequences, right? As you, as you said, it's, it's law regulated. We could talk about so many political issues. Uh, however, when it comes to sustainability, China is, is one of the leading countries, right? And I applaud that. Now, I, I am interested in what could be one of the biggest uh, challenges that you have faced in Dubai or in Thailand or there in, in China. You already mentioned that there was a little bit of resistance, right? But what could be a challenge that you can uh, tell us from uh, different parts parts of the world that you have visited or there in Shanghai? Yeah, but when I was in Thailand, I think the biggest challenge is 
from what I've seen, from my, my uh, only uh, first observation was the lack of organization, uh, the lack of infrastructure. I was in uh, Phuket and Bangkok and the surroundings, and it's very difficult to enforce uh, any law or anything in those countries because, again, it's, uh, it's not a totalitarian system. If, if it's not really pushed uh, by the top, it's going to be it's going to take so much time. When I was in Dubai, I thought that my gender or uh, the color of my skin might hinder me from um, achieving what I want. And from what I, again, from my mere observation, I, I think it might be a, a hindrance, but not something that, is, that seems impossible. Again, I've been so I've been working in China, and so I see how fast things move, and how and how well they move, and how efficiently. And I feel like other countries cannot come at that level. I do agree with some parts of what you're mentioning, but again, we have to think about uh, how a democracy works and how uh, an authoritarian system works, and either of them are uh, perfect, right? So now I would like to ask, what are the projects that you are working on at the moment? So with COVID, uh, my biggest project is to get my knowledge to as many people as I can at the, at the best rate I can. And for me, that project is PACE. It's a very practical guide. Uh, it's, a very, it's really like a course, like hold your hands, kind of, hold your hands kind of course um, it's it's uh, it's really our, our best product yet. It's basically having a tiny uh, Alize or a tiny Zeroist team in your pocket at all times. It's online. It's available at, at any time. It's um, yeah. It's it's really like I I feel like I just poured my entire brain and our entire business model into uh, this online platform. I'm really really proud of it. Mid July pace will be fully online completed. Right now we have. Uh, seven out of the eight modules that are online. Uh, this week will be eight modules. By early July, Pace will be fully online in two languages, Chinese and English. That is very interesting. And I would like to know, is there any advice you could give uh, people who are starting or are interested in becoming an active environmentalist in China or in other parts of the world? I want to be smart about it because when we work for a project that is so dear to our hearts with so much passion, there's so much emotions that come with it, and we are we, we share we want to share the um, yeah our passion for it, and it's amazing, and I'd say use that passion to drive you. On the other hand, be also aware of of the logic and the business side behind it. Um, it, you have to be really aware of how you want to be seen. So do you want to be seen as like an environmentalist, like on the front lines and do that. But if you want to be, you want to feel like you're having I don't know, a bigger impact, then you have to play with the big boys. And you have to, what I always say is like, be aware of the structure of the framework you're in, gov governmental, uh, legally, and be aware of what the limitations are, um, society, like even society-wise, and then just play with that. Honestly, I think in the end it comes down to having a goal and having a strategy. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Kobe Bryant for the moment, who passed away unfortunately in, in, uh, in January. He knew he wanted to be the best basketball player, but he improved his skill set one year at a time. So this year I focus on this, next year I focus on this, and, and that's how he went. And so this is how I function as well. I know where I want to go. I, w I know where I want to be in 20 years, but you have to understand what type of culture you're like, you, you operate in and how people react and again the cultural differences I know that in China people are very much like money like there's no money it doesn't make sense so you have to I have to work on money right which is fine because that's what I believe in as well um, but other countries might think differently that might, might be more emotional about the environment so I'd, I'd say have a goal have a strategy and educate yourself meet people even meet people who don't agree with you like that's so important to meet people who don't agree with you because then you understand, because then you learn as well. You learn what their limitations are. Wow, thank you very much for your advice, Alice. And again, thank you very much for having the time of being with us and granting us with this interview for eConnect and the ECOS. This is the first interview, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eric, to, for having me. I was really happy to be talking with you today. Yeah, I hope we get to do this more often. Uh, yeah, so have a good day. All right, you too. Thank you. Have a great evening. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for watching this very first interview 
of eConnect at the ECOS. And thanks again to Alize. If you would like to contact her, uh, the information is going to be there in the description of the video. And well, I just have to say good evening. Thank you very much. And remember, every Friday is Interview Friday. Bye. My name is Eric Vasquez. Thank you. Good evening.